Hey everyone, welcome back to a, another episode. Uh, this week, as you might be able to tell from the shirt, is I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, this is not the week of the Big Shave Swest. Uh, that was about a month or so ago. Uh, April 27th, and today's date is uh, and the 29th, so it was a month ago and two days. Um, but, while I was here, I was able to swing into Phoenix Arson Accoutrements and uh, speak with Douglas and pick up a couple of goodies from his establishment, as well as another one uh, located actually in Chandler, which is um, what shaving products. So I was able to get some products from both of those amazing soap companies. Uh, more on that to come. Uh, but for tonight, when I'm using uh, something that I picked up that is not yet available, and that is a very fantastic summer scent, is Immortal Peach. And now, as I mentioned, this is not yet available. Uh, it should be coming out very soon. Uh, it's actually been now offered in the CK6 formula. So if you had this from last year, uh, you'll know it's a fantastic peach scent. Very, very peach forward. That's pretty much all I get off of the puck. And it's just a phenomenal, fresh peach smell that is just oh, heavenly. So I'll be using this tonight. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm using the full puck, or have the full tub with me, is because I drove it in fly down here. You know, I'm currently here on vacation, so my family's in the hotel with me as well. But luckily it's late enough, late enough at night that most of them are asleep. Uh, now, the brush that I'm using is going to be my Craving Shaving uh, German Handle Brush with the Duro Knot. Duro Knot also available from PAA. And I uh, created the lather there in my, kind of my homemade lather bowl here. I do have my Vanille bowl but I used that the other night and wanted to use something a little different, so I decided to whip it up in this. And as you can see, tons of lather in here, as well as in the brush. And of course, the razor that I'll be using is my Starling with a gem PTFE coated blade. Uh, and I've honestly lost track of how many uses are on that blade there. But it's still performing exceptionally well. So as you can see, tons of lather in this thing. The Dura Knot is fantastic, as I mentioned, also available from Phoenix Arson Accoutrements. Now the soap has a very nice uh, scent strength off the puck. The lather is really exceptionally well, as uh, anyone who has used CK6 in the past knows, it's just a fantastic reformer, but can be very thirsty, depending on how you want your consistency of that lather. Now when traveling, I use a little squirt bottle, and as you can see, that's kind of what I used in there, and this was full all the way to the top, which is right about there. So I used a substantial amount of water, also from whatever was remaining in the knot itself. And if you've used a Duro knot, you know that they can hold a decent amount of lather, or a decent amount of water, for a synthetic brush. And this is just going on extremely well. Now the scent strength, um, when I'm using, like, I don't want to assign a, a number to it because it's all very subjective, but I'm still getting a very nice scent. Uh, I can definitely smell the scent of the soap, the peaches, uh, while it's here sitting on my face. It's absolutely beautiful. Love the scent here. As mentioned, using the Starling with this tonight, I'm using the open comb or the green plate. Now, as far as Phoenix, I'm actually seeing a Chandler, which is a suburb of Phoenix. So Phoenix itself, the closest airport is the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, which is pretty dang large, but relatively easy to get in and out of. If you're flying in here and you need to get a rental car, you will need to take a shuttle to a centrally located a rental car eight, uh, building. I'm sure they do run fairly often. So getting a rental car here is not that big of a deal. It's relatively easy to do. And it's not that far from the airport, so it's actually nice and convenient to get a rental car. Now once you're in Phoenix, there's a lot of stuff to do in Phoenix. Uh, this is a huge city. with a lot to do in and around the surrounding area. Now, if you want to stay in Phoenix, uh, so a couple things about Phoenix itself. Uh, it is the fifth most 
populous city in the country. It is also the state capital of Arizona. It is the most populous state capital in the United States, and it has is the only state capital with over a million residents. So as you can imagine, driving here during rush hour is very much stop and go. Now the freeways around Phoenix and the surrounding areas, they kind of go around Phoenix uh, and then they kind of go um, the other directions you can like what they bisect. So it's a very interesting uh, freeway system. Definitely different than most places I've ever been to. It takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you do it, it's actually not bad to drive here, other than traffic. And tra rush hour starts around 3 o'clock or so, and goes for a decent amount of time. Uh, now, Phoenix itself is known as the Valley of the Sun, because it is in the desert. But it's still a very beautiful area. I mean, there's lots of... If you get outside of Phoenix itself, there's a lot of amazing scenery with cacti and everything else. See, it was uh, settled in 1867, but incorporated in 1889. And, uh, it's, you know, it's, so it's been around for quite a while. Now, Phoenix area is kind of like, um, you know, like Los Angeles or San Francisco. A lot of the other major cities in that. You drive around, there's suburbs that are other towns that are not Phoenix itself, but you don't know you're there unless, unless you see the sign that says, hey, entering Scottsdale, Mesa, Tempe, um, various other suburbs of Phoenix itself. Uh, now, if you're looking for some really high-end shopping, you can go to Scottsdale. Um, a couple years ago, I had a coworker, I was working in Scottsdale, and a coworker called me up and she says, hey, where are you working this week? And I told him I was in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. And he laughed. He says, hey, man, how are you, you enjoying the uh, retirement town there? <laughs> and uh, I told him, you know, I spent four years working in and around various places in Los Angeles. In 10 minutes in Scottsdale, I have some more Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces, Ferraris, really high-end Mercedes, BMW 7 Series, and what have you. Um, in 10 to 15 minutes in Scottsdale than I ever did in Beverly Hills and other areas of LA. So it's a very, very affluent area and they have shopping to match. But it's still, the downtown area is, uh, is very nice. It's, it's kind of like a, um, a beach town vibe, but there's no beach. So, and there's that. You also have the historic downtown Chandler, which is uh, where we are staying this week. This is also where the Big Shave Southwest was located this year, uh, hosted by Douglas and Fran of Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements. So the town of Chandler was founded by a gentleman with the last name of Chandler, I can't remember his first name, but he, um, he built a hotel, which is actually where the Big Shave Southwest was located. And that was, and then everything from there grew from proximity of that hotel out. So from that hotel there are tons of restaurants, bars, art galleries, whatever you, whatever you would want is in uh, old downtown Chandler. Let's see, there's also, uh, so one thing that's really cool with this area is it is home to a lot of wet shaving companies. Phoenix itself is home of uh, Razor Emporium. If you go come to Chandler, you can visit wet shaving products and pick up their phenomenal soaps. I used one of theirs uh, the other night and it is, it is fantastic. Uh, if you go about an hour and a half south of Chandler, you can go to Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements. 
Now one thing with uh, PAA that I do want to mention is that Doug's and Fran do not have a storefront. But they are very willing uh, to let people stop in. Or not, I don't know about very willing, but they are willing to let people come in, uh, kind of get a little bit behind the scenes tour. As long as you don't chip with Douglas first, make sure he's available and make sure it's okay for you to just pop in. Uh, their building is very unassuming. It doesn't say PAA anywhere on it. Uh, no wet shipping products. Uh, they have a very, very small storefront. Double check their website for their hours. And uh, make sure if you can, um, go there when a time that uh, Melanie is available. She is very knowledgeable about the products and can answer all of your questions that you may or may not have. And uh, definitely will give you some suggestions. She's very, very good at what she does. So major shout out to Melanie, Douglas, and Fran this week for allowing me to go in, answer all the questions I have, uh, smell different products, and uh, just for great people to, uh, to interact with while I was here in town. So I'd highly recommend if you can visit at least both of those. Regretfully, I wasn't able to get to uh, Razor Report you here. Uh, let's see, if you are, are into sports, pretty much Phoenix has you covered. Uh, if you like football, you have the Cardinals. If you like uh, baseball, Diamondbacks. Or if you like basketball, you got the Suns. Or even surprisingly, hockey, they have the Coyotes. So if you like any kind of sports, Phoenix is definitely a good town for you in that aspect. Uh, let's see, also, Arizona State University, which is also housed or located here in Phoenix, is home of the Frank Lloyd Wright School of Architecture. And he built a summer home here. And I believe you can go see, I can't remember what it's called or where it's located, but you can definitely go see that. Uh, if you haven't seen any of his structures that he's designed, they're amazing. Uh, I saw a couple when I was uh, in, in New York a couple years back, and they're just beautiful there. Also, if you're into more science versus architecture, uh, you can go to Oracle, which is about an hour and a half south of Chandler, really close to uh, Oro Valley and Tucson, and you can go to the Biosphere 2. Now, a lot of, there's a misconception about the Biosphere 2, that it was the second attempt after a failed experiment. That's not true. Biosphere 1 is the Earth. It's where we live. So Biosphere 2 was uh, an attempt to see if they could make a man-made structure for colonization of extraterrestrial places like the moon, Mars, you know, whatever, or potentially also down underwater. And now with that, they do have, uh, they have very, five various biomes or regions built within the biosphere too. So there's a, a desert from uh, California. Uh, you have a swamp land from like Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, there's an ocean, um, a savanna, just really cool. And now you can take tours. Uh, originally, when they first opened it up to public tours, uh, people were, you weren't allowed to go inside. You could just walk around the facility. And then the next, so, uh, so I was able to go on those tours when I was younger. My grandma lived in Casa Grande, which is about 45 minutes or so south of Chandler, which is also where uh, Phoenix Rest and Accoutrement is located is in Casa Grande. So I spent many of my formidable years growing up uh, coming here to, to uh, the Arizona Phoenix Casa Grande area and seeing much cool things. Uh, so the Biosphere 2, when they first offered tours, uh, you can only go outside and kind of look in through the, the glass. It's, a lot of it's a huge uh, greenhouse. It's kind of what it feels like. Then the next year, they actually let you go inside and walk around and see some of the places. 
then the year after that. Uh, now, the first year that we were allowed to go in, we couldn't go to where the scientists that lived there when they were enclosed for two years and I believe 20 minutes. Uh, you couldn't go into their living space. And then the second time that we went, where you actually go inside, we were obviously able to go into where the scientists lived. You can see the kitchen and their apartments and, and whatnot. And that was very, very entertaining. I loved that. That was one of my favorite things uh, when I would come down here to visit my grandma, is uh, going to the biosphere too, at least once during that trip. Uh, and that was just phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. Uh, let's see, you can also go to, if you want to go a little bit further south, about two hours away, uh, you can go to Old Tucson, which is a, uh, a film set where they filmed many westerns. And uh, you can go toward that, and there's rides. It's a, an old film set slash amusement park. Uh, so you can go down there and, and see all those things. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit more of an authentic western town, uh, you can go in the kind of opposite direction and go to the uh, Goldfield Ghost Town, which is near Apache Junction. Now that is an actual functional ghost town. Uh, there's people there that, and uh, there's the restaurants and shops, and you can take a train ride, tell you the history of that town and kind of uh, the Lost Dutchman Mine. Really nice smooth shave here. Uh, just, but it is, very touristy. So keep in mind that um, if you do go there and go that route, that if you want to go gold mining there, there's a fee. If you want to take a train ride around the town and learn the history of the town, there's a fee. You want to go to the museum, there's a fee. You want to go down into one of the mines, there's a fee. So just so you're aware of that. Now the train ride is pretty cool, it's about 20 minutes. Uh, that's one thing that we did and it tells you the history of all the various mines around there and the town and tells you when it became an actual ghost town. The kids had a blast with that one. They loved the train ride. Now also, uh, depending on if you are flying in or driving from the north, if you're driving from the north, depending on which way you come down, uh, you can drive over part of the Grand Canyon and you can actually, you'll drive over it, uh, you go down a little bit more there's a little pullout you can take where you can uh, then get out, you know, park your vehicle, get out and take a couple pictures of the, the northern side of the Grand Canyon, which is really, really cool to see. Uh, also, if you're coming down from the north, you can uh, most likely end up, if you're going like, I can't remember the name of the highway, uh, you can go through Flagstaff, which is just a beautiful area, beautiful area up there. Uh, it is colder than down here in Phoenix. So it can snow in Flagstaff. Yes, they do get snow in Arizona. And, and depending on which way you go from leaving Flagstaff, uh, you can either bypass or drive through Sonoma. Now Sonoma is... Sedona. Sedona. Thank you. That was my wife. You can go through Sedona. Sonoma's a bit of a county. Uh, Sedona is a beautiful city. Uh, just tons of natural formations and everything there just absolutely gorgeous can highly recommend driving through there uh, we came down on memorial day or the Memorial Day weekend so we didn't really stop we just kind of drove through and, and looked at the natural beauty of the surrounding area but uh definitely beautiful area there a friend of mine that lives here so we need to at least drive through it once either coming home or going Going, going down to Phoenix or as we uh, drive home. Just absolutely beautiful. That's about a three hour drive from here. There are a lot of roundabouts or turnabouts or whatever you want to call them. So do be aware of that. They can be frustrating. And that area is a little touristy. So do be aware of that. There we go. That was fantastic. So, that finishes that. That was a beautiful shave there. 
So all in all, Phoenix and the surrounding area is a really nice area. I just don't come in like July, August, it's hotter than Hades. But there is a lot to do here. Uh, we've been here for, let's see, for four days. Now we're actually ready to head out and uh, we barely scratched the surface of everything there's to do here. There's just so much to do in Phoenix. Um, they have tons of zoos. Uh, now one of the malls in, I believe it's in Mesa, I might probably tell me if I'm incorrect here. They have a Lego experience that's associated with uh, Lego Land. Lego Discovery Center. Lego Discovery Center. And what was the uh, Creole experience? Creole experience is here in Chandler, which if you have little kids like to color, is awesome. It's also very entertaining for adults. The Lego experience was awesome for adults as well. And then the aquarium, the sea life thing. Sea life. They have the sea life. See the aquarium, which is right across the. It's actually in a mall, uh, right across from the uh, the Lego experience. But they have other aquariums. And they have they have a ton of other aquariums here in Phoenix as well. Uh, there is also an endangered species zoo that you can visit. Uh, so all in all, I mean, there's so much that we didn't do here in Phoenix that it would warrant another trip, if the wife would agree to that one. Also, one thing that's down here is. Um, Believe it or not, my absolute favorite barbecue restaurant in the country is located here in Phoenix. I know Calvin Rex, if you're watching this, she will strongly disagree. Uh, but that restaurant is Bobby Q's. Uh, their first original location is located off the 17 um, in Phoenix itself. They have a location in, Chan in uh, Mesa and then one in uh, the Biltmore Hotel. And it is just phenomenal. I absolutely love that place. Uh, there's tons of good food here. If you like German, uh, there are two German restaurants in Mesa as well. Uh, one of the Bavaria, uh, Bavarian something or other, I've been there, eh, they're okay. I uh, would definitely recommend going to Zurkata. That one is uh, fantastic. Even my kids enjoyed it and they're very picky. Tons of other good, uh, believe it or not, there's good sushi here. Sushi, you can go to Scottsdale. They have some fantastic sushi in Scottsdale. Uh, of course, barbecue uh, and Mexican food. You can get a lot of Mexican food here and it's all really good. So overall Phoenix is a fantastic place. If you're ever in this area, uh, definitely have a ton of things to do. And next year, I was speaking with Douglas, uh, I do believe they're hosting the Big Shave Southwest here as well, or Big Shave Swest. Also be located in Chandler. Uh, so keep a look, look out for that and dates for the announcement. And uh, when you come down here, definitely enjoy Phoenix. It's a fantastic place. So again, thank you for tuning in, and I hope to catch you in another episode later on.